The new year is always a time to reflect on the changes that we want or maybe need to make. Now, if you're an artist and you're looking for a new and challenging hobby, you definitely want to consider reaching out to my next guest this morning. She is an incredibly talented artist who is teaching her skills with others. She can help you learn how to create such beautiful and powerful watercolor paintings. And trust me, if you take her up on this offer, you will be learning from the best. Karen, it is such a pleasure having you here this morning. Thank you very much. Good Karen, to be here. Well, like I mentioned, it's great having you here, Karen. And I understand that you are a retired teacher who has now taken up art full time. I have. I have. I came down from Chicago as a tourist, like everybody else, <laughs> and uh, eventually purchased a, a place and did the snowbird thing for a while. And then we're, I'm now here permanently. Um, I was painting as a child, like a lot of people play. Um, but it was very serious for me, mm -hmm. and all the way through my schooling and then my job uh, teaching, I taught physical education, but I also taught dance, and so I had a chance to choreograph the musicals. I was backstage painting sets, um, and then people saw that I had a little bit of talent and said, well, could you paint my house? Could you paint a mural in my daughter's bedroom? And mm -hmm. before I knew it, I had all these little jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I retired in 2005, I knew that I wanted to paint. That's all I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So, so that's here you are. That's, you're, that's doing right. it. Yeah. you're doing it full time, and you are so well at what you do, Karen. Thank is you. Is watercolor your your specialty? It is now. Mm -hmm. It, it um, at first I thought, well, I need to be painting oil because oil painters are taken very seriously, and watercolor was a medium that I used when I went on vacation. Mm -hmm. I bring my little sketchbook and my paints, and I would play around with it. Then I take it home and then I would come up with an oil painting, thinking that that was what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on one of my vacations down here, I ran into um, Sanford Birdsey, who is a very famous artist here, but also worldwide and international. And she kind of came from the same school of watercolor is, is a playing medium, it's not serious, um, even though famous people like Winslow Homer and John Singer Sargent were all watercolorists, but people looked at those as their sketch medium and then the serious oils would come next. Mm -hmm. But she explored watercolor and then passed that gift on to a lot of us here. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> I finally realized that you could do a lot with watercolor and it really picks up the light and the color and the movement and the energy, I think, maybe mm -hmm. that's a good word for it, energy here in the Keys and the tropics, much mm -hmm. to me, much better than an oil does. Um, not to put down any oil, any oil paintings <laughs> because I still do pick up the oil, right. but it doesn't um, it doesn't sing to me, it doesn't talk to me like watercolor does. Mm -hmm. And I've also discovered that you can do so many things with watercolor, mm -hmm. um, and you can add acrylic to it or you can add gouache to it, which is more of an opaque watercolor to it, and get a whole nother look. So oh, absolutely. So I that's agree. what I'm doing. I agree. It is absolutely beautiful. You make Thank your you. creations so beautiful. Isn't watercolor more challenging too? It can be, um, you know, you have to plan. Um, I used to plan my oils too, but if I didn't, uh, I could really paint over something if I didn't, wasn't happy with it. In watercolor, you could just sew over the whole thing and start over. Uh, you'd have a different surface to work on, but um, there's tricks to the trade. And if you plan well ahead of time, then once you put it on paper, it's where you want it to be to begin with. So I teach my students to plan and think a little bit ahead of time um, so they can be prepared for anything that might happen. But I also tell them, well, you know, if this happens, this is what we could do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can fix. Yeah, we can fix. You know that little, that little um, Mr. Clean magic pad? Uh -huh. Takes watercolor right off the paper. Okay, good. good. <laughs> now, what if you've never picked up a brush before in your life, Karen? Is it hard to pick up something like watercolor painting? People think think that it is, and, and I don't believe that it is. I think you can be you can be very photorealistic with it, or you can just let it move and splash and show its own energy. Um, and I think that's maybe what people are fearful of. Mm -hmm. They think they have to control it, or they want to control it. And I think watercolor is best when it's not controlled. That's mm -hmm. again, that's my opinion. And when I look at different watercolors in a, in a show or in a magazine my eye goes right to the ones that are playful and loose mm -hmm. um, and just give the essence of what the artist saw rather than a photo of what they saw. Um, that doesn't tell me anything about the artist. It didn't tell me really anything about what they saw or felt. Mm 
-hmm. So um, I, to answer your question, I think um, it takes time and you have to paint, 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 paint. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a, a teacher told me once, I showed him a piece and he said, that's wonderful, now do 200 more. Wow. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's something that, mm -hmm. that you just have to work at, but um, not be afraid of mistakes. One thing that I tell my students all the time is it's only paper. Right. You can rip it up, you can make it into a card, you can use it for collage, you know, you can paint on the back. Mm -hmm. So if you make a mistake, just, it's not really a mistake. Right. It you might start over. Yeah. You can have a second chance. Yeah. You can have paint a million chances, right? Paint it again. <laughs> See what happens the next time, and the next time, and the and next time. Right. And practice makes perfect. Tell me about your classes that you offer, Karen. They're at the Key West Art Center, which is at 301 Front Street. They are Tuesdays for the season, January, February, and March. They are from 10 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon, and then we all go to lunch. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's only room for 10 people, though. It's upstairs at the Art Center, so it's a small venue, but it's a very small and intimate class, and I do demonstrations, we do critiques, I give homework. Uh, um, okay. Remember the paint, paint, paint thing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, we, but we have a lot, of t a lot of fun, and it's very relaxed, and a lot of people have come with me through these different years now, and um, they stay with me, and now they know each other, and so mm -hmm. it's a very friendly class. Um, I have room for a few more, but um, uh, kind of a few more each week. So mm -hmm. right now, I, last week, this week was the first class, and we were full, mm -hmm. so that was wonderful. Great. So if you want more information on Karen, you want to get involved in these classes, you can check out her website that you see on the bottom of the screen. Karen, I think this could be a great challenge for our viewers. Get them trying something new this mm -hmm. year. Absolutely. Learn how to be a watercolor painter like you. I don't know <laughs> if they can be that good. You've oh, got talent. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. But thank you so much for being on the show this morning and sharing your work. I'm going to take a quick break right now, but I will be right back after these messages. Stay with me.